Hello. Okay, so welcome. If this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, my name is Deanne and I, my website is small but kind of mighty and I am a crocheter, a maker, a crochet designer and a crochet teacher. Uh, this is a YouTube live stream, but it's also a Facebook live for my crochet group. So um, if you're watching on YouTube and want to join the group, the link is in the description box below. Now, um, if you are here live, then please do say hello. <laughs> Maybe drop a pumpkin emoji and feel free to ask any questions. Um, I will check comments periodically just to make sure I don't miss anything. I apologize. I have weepy eyes for some reason. I think it's allergies. Oh. Okay. Right, so um, first, let's make sure you downloaded the free pattern for Seamus the Pumpkin. Uh, the link uh, to the pattern is in the description box. This is the pattern. Um, it is free to download on my website and it is um, also listed on Ravelry. All of my patterns are listed on Ravelry, but um, it does cost a dollar uh, if you do want to purchase it uh, via Ravelry. The reason for that is I've listed patterns free on Ravelry before, and what I've discovered is that um, if I update the pattern or change it in any way, the people who downloaded it previously don't get an updated version. So that's why I charge a uh, dollar, uh, just to make sure that people always have the updated version of the pattern. Um, but the pattern is free to download on my website and the same applies um, because I get your email when you download then um, uh, if I make any changes or updates to the pattern, then you automatically get emailed with a revised copy. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the pumpkin emoji, Nick. That's awesome. <laughs> There's one person here. Yay. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's just quickly go through the pattern and make sure that, um, you've got everything you need in terms of yarn and supplies and such. Um, now I'm just going to share my screen with you. Yay. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is the pattern. And uh, at the front, there's a list of abbreviations that I use throughout the pattern. In terms of materials, um, Uh, this guy here, there he is, he is made with worsted weight yarn 
and using a 3.75 millimeter hook. Um, the pumpkin that I'm making for this crochet along, I'm using a heavier weight yarn. Um, so that's this guy. This is where we're gonna get up to today. Oh, wow, oh, hang on. Okay, there we go. See, he's bigger. So um, the yarn that I'm using is, um, I'm just gonna show you a picture. Nope, it won't let me, oh darn it. Okay, so uh, the yarn that I'm using is, um, for this guy, is called Outback Chunky. And I got this from Hand Knit Yarn, which is my local yarn store. And it is um, a heavier weight yarn. Um, it's an Aran weight, I think. And the colors that I'm using are, well, this one is called orange. Uh, this one is called chocolate. And this one is emerald. Uh, I also, you will also need a little bit of white yarn for the eyes. Um, and I just used some uh, Aran weight white yarn that I had in my stash. So uh, going back to the pattern. Okay, so the, um, as you can see, the 3.75 millimeter crochet hook is if you're making um, the pumpkin with worsted white yarn. If uh, for the um, pumpkin that I'm making for this crochet along, because I'm using a heavier weight yarn, I'm using a larger sized hook. So the hook that I'm using with this one is uh, five millimeters. Uh, for the regular sized pumpkin, you'll need 12 millimeter safety eyes and obviously some um, polyfill or other filling, whichever you use. You'll need a yarn needle. And one thing I need to make note of that the pattern doesn't list is you will also need um, locking stitch markers. Well, they're optional, they're not vital for this project, but they will help you. So, yarn, supplies, there's a link to the Facebook group, and um, just a general note, US terminology is used throughout. Um, the pattern is written assuming that you crochet into the back loop only of each stitch unless otherwise indicated. Now for the eyes and the stalk and the tendril, if you want to crochet under both loops because you just prefer doing it that way, that's fine. But for the gourd part of the pumpkin, it is actually um, quite important that you crochet in the back loop only where indicated. Um, otherwise, uh, the design doesn't quite work. So, um, yeah, the pumpkin is worked in continuous rounds. So there's no uh, slip stitching at the end of each round. We just keep going. And uh, at the end of the pattern, and also in the description box below, I've got links to various videos, which if you're a beginner, and I wouldn't 
recommend this pattern for beginners. It's a little bit too fiddly in places, I think. Um, but if you are a beginner and, or you need a refresher on some things like how to make a magic ring, how to make increases, how to decrease, that sort of thing, then I've linked to the relevant uh, videos where I go through that in a bit more detail. So we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to um, start with the eyes. Um, and okay, um, I hope this works. <laughs> I've actually put together a video of me making um, the uh, pumpkin uh, or everything up to this stage anyway. So I'm going to share my screen with you and show you um, how I make the eyes and then I will also uh, talk you through it. So let me just see if I can get the video here. Okay, that's cool. Share my screen. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start by making the eyes and that's going to be uh, six single crochet in the magic ring and as I mentioned, I've got a video where I go through how I do the magic ring in detail. So uh, feel free to watch that if you're not sure what I'm doing. Um, when we've made the six single crochet in the magic ring, we will be increasing the stitch count for the round to 12. Uh, so we will be working an increase, um, so two single crochet in each of the six single crochets from round one. Okay, so that's the end of round one. I'm just going to count and make sure that I have got six. Yes. Hooray. Now, these are worked into the back loop only, as I mentioned before. So we're going to do an increase or two single crochet in the back loop only in each of those six single crochets from round one. And when we get to 12, I'll show you how I finish off uh, the eyes uh, so that they are nice and round. Oh, gosh. I don't know why I'm leaking. <laughs> My eyes. Okay. So at the end of round two, we've got a stitch count of 12. And you'll notice that there's quite a big jag between the first stitch in round, uh, round two, sorry, and the last stitch in the round. So to come up with a more even finish, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. We're going to break the yarn and pull the yarn through, put it onto our yarn needle, and then go under the head or the both of the loops of the next stitch. Then insert our yarn needle into the middle of the slip stitch and also go underneath the back loop of the single crochet that we slip stitched into. 
Um, it's actually quite simple, but the, <laughs> it just sounds really complicated when you talk through the steps. So that is how you get a clean fasten off and how you get your eyes to be a nice round circle instead of that sort of spiral jagged look. Then we're going to insert the post from our eyes. I'm using 15 millimeter eyes here because I'm making a bigger pumpkin. Um, but if you're making a pumpkin in worsted weight, then I would recommend 12 millimeter eyes. Don't stick the washer onto the back of the post. Um, we're just going to uh, secure our starting tail end and I've also got a video demo of how I do that which is uh, a lot clearer than this um, white yarn is always really difficult <laughs> to demonstrate with um, but um, securing the starting tail end uh, just basically keeps the post in place but uh, don't attach your back washer yet um, we're just going to make two eyes and set them aside. Now, before actually starting to crochet the gourd, then uh, cut three strands of your orange yarn and it'll become apparent why we need those later. To start the gourd itself, then we're going to um, work the first seven rounds under both loops of each single crochet and that's because it will give us a nice flat stiff uh, bottom to our pumpkin so we're going to start with six single crochet in the magic ring and once we've done those six we will be increasing using multiples of six. If you want to um, get to grips a little bit more with uh, how you increase uh, using multiples of six, I actually just posted a video earlier this week on how to crochet a ball. Um, and I go through the um, math and the process in quite a bit of detail. So I'm starting round two here and I'm putting my hook under both loops of each of the single crochets from round one and I am working an increase or two single crochets into each of those six stitches. So by the end of round two we're going to end up with a stitch count of 12. Now, I'm not going to show you every single round <laughs> that I made um, because I think that would be really quite boring. Um, but uh, basically, you're going to work um, following the pattern. You're going to work seven rounds um, of increases. And then once we start round eight, we'll start working in the back loop only. Okay, so that's the end of round two. So you're just going to continue working rounds three through seven. And just be. Um, okay. I wanted to just take a minute to talk about why I designed this pumpkin, this guy here. Uh, I actually designed him about two years ago and uh, I'm not really that fond of reinventing the wheel. Uh, I like to use other designers patterns if um, they've already put the work in and um, there was a ton of um, patterns, free pumpkin patterns, uh, even two years ago. I'm sure that there are more now. 
but I couldn't find a design that I liked. Um, the first reason being um, a, a lot of the pumpkins were um, like smooth and round. And um, I wanted a pumpkin that had a rough edge with, I'm not sure if you can, let me see if I can get you to see. Can you see where the indentations are on this, on along the side? Yeah, I wanted indents like here and here, like a proper pumpkin. <clears throat> and um, I couldn't find one. There were, there were, uh, ones where you um, worked in rows and then sewed it together to make a pumpkin. But those gave you rough ridges, not like the indents that I wanted. Some of the patterns made like a round pumpkin shape in the round, and then they created the indents by tying threads around the outside of the pumpkin and I didn't really like that um, so that's why I decided to design this chap um, in terms of why he's called Seamus I actually asked for uh, opinions in the Facebook group as to what a good name for him would be because I really didn't want to call him Jack and uh, the origin story of um, the jack-o'-lantern is uh, from Ireland originally. So I wanted to use an Irish name. And one of the people in the Facebook group, uh, I believe it was Rowena, suggested Seamus, um, which I thought was perfect because uh, Seamus is the Irish version of James. Um, James is an Anglicized, sorry, James is a Latinized version of Jacob. Um, so it sort of fit quite nicely in terms of um, like an Irish version of Jack. Um, Okay, let me show you what to do once you have finished round seven. Um, you'll be working even rounds for rounds eight to 15. Uh, so let me start the video again. Just double check. Okay, so once you've completed round seven, you'll have the bottom of your pumpkin um, and it will probably look like a hexagon because you're increasing using multiples of six. Um, so that's totally fine. Don't worry if it doesn't look round. Um, and then what we are going to do for rounds eight through 15 is um, work uh, even rounds, but we're going to do um, a repeat of single crochet in the back loop only for the first three stitches, then single crochet in the front loop only of the fourth stitch, and I'm going to put a locking stitch marker in the back loop. Then the next three stitches will be a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch. And that's your basic repeat, which you will work um, around for each round. So three single crochets in the back loop only one single crochet in the front loop only, and then another 
three single crochets in the back loop only. And once you've finished round eight, what you will have is um, something that looks like this. Now what I'm doing here is just pulling my starting tail end, which I've already secured using the method that um, I mentioned below. Um, sorry, the method that I mentioned previously. Um, I'm pulling it through to the outside of the fabric so that it doesn't get in my way. Then with the three strands of yarn that you cut at the beginning before you started your gourd, um, you're then going to thread those through the back loops that you put stitch markers in. And you're going to do that for each of those three strands. Um, Basically, so you've got uh, a, a crisscross with the um, one end of the strand uh, coming through one side and the other end of the strand um, coming through the opposite side. Now, what I did for round nine was put my stitch markers in the back loop um, before I started the round. Um, so um, in the back loop of each of the fourth stitch in my seven stitch repeat. So now I'm again going to do three single crochets in the back loop only and then I get to my stitch marker. So that reminds me that I have to do a single crochet in the front loop only. And then I go back to doing three single crochets in the back loop only of each of the next three stitches. And that's my seven stitch repeat which I'm then going to do all the way around the pumpkin until I have finished round nine. Once you've done a couple of rounds, then if you cut the middle of each strand and then secure it using the same method that you used for securing your starting tail ends at the edge of the bottom of the pumpkin, Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is you've probably gathered that uh, we're going to use these strands to pull in the um, sides of our pumpkin to give us those little indentations. But I don't want to pull uh, in or tighten the bottom of the gourd. Um, so that's why I have cut the strands and secured them um, basically where the side of the gourd starts. Okay, so here I've got to the end of round 15. And what I'm demonstrating here is that you can see that first front loop from the beginning of round eight. And only working it working in only the back loops enables it uh, it makes it easier for me to count my rounds so i can see easily that i have got to round 15 and um while you are working on excuse me oh gosh leaky eyes again okay <clears throat> while you're working on um, either the bottom or the sides wherever you're up to right now what I thought I would do is share the story that I wrote about Seamus 
Um, if you didn't know, um, all of my Amigurumi characters have a backstory and I write down these stories into little um, booklets or zines. Um, some of them are fairy tales, some are stories based on folklore, um, some of the stories are ones that I've made up myself. So for example, I've got Archie. Um, my son character, and uh, I made up his story, um, or wrote his story, I guess, um, and it's called When the Sun um, uh, Never Set, and uh, you can actually check out that story for free. There's a free download of it on my website, so... Uh, I will put a link to that in the description box below because I don't think it's there yet. Um, so for Seamus, um, I wrote a story based on, um, on Irish folklore. Um, it's a retelling of the legend regarding the origin behind uh, making jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. And I polled the crocheters in my Facebook group and asked them if they would like to see a copy of the stories that I write for the characters with the patterns. And they thought that was a pretty cute idea. That way, if you are making, um, let's say, a pumpkin for a child, then you've also got the story that you can read with them as well. Um, so if you don't object, <laughs> I am going to read to you, um, my story, which is called The Legend of Stingy Jacko the Lantern. And, um, I've got a copy of it here. So let me start sharing. Okay, so let me make this. Okay, so the legend of Stingy Jacko the Lantern. According to Irish folklore, one Halloween, the devil visited a man called Stingy Jack. Jack was mean and cruel, but clever, and he thought he could outsmart the devil. Jack invited the devil to join him in a drink. But as he didn't want to pay for it, he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin. Jack then slipped the coin into his pocket next to a silver cross, which prevented the devil from turning back into his original form. Jack freed the devil on condition that he wouldn't bother him for a year. The following Halloween, the devil visited Jack again. This time, Jack tricked the devil into a tree to pick fruit. Jack nailed a cross into the tree so the devil was again trapped. Jack released the devil once he promised not to bother him for 10 years. And if he died during that time, the devil would not claim his soul. Soon after that, Jack died. As a mean, cruel, and unrepentant man, God would not allow Jack's soul into heaven. The devil, bound by his promise, refused to claim Jack's soul. The devil sent Jack off into the night with a burning ember. Jack put the ember into a carved out turnip and has been roaming the earth since. The Irish called him Jack of the Lantern. Jack of the Lantern was, over time, shortened to Jack o' Lantern. Irish immigrants to North America brought their stories with them and found pumpkins were much better than turnips. So there you go, that's my story. And if you like the idea of, um, um, having the stories that I write included with the patterns that I publish, 
then let me know. Um, take a look at the copy of the story that you've got in the pattern that you have and leave a comment and um, say that you love this idea and maybe give the video a like as well, what the heck. So um, the last part that I've got ready for the crochet along or the pumpkin along is uh, inserting the eyes. So basically we are up to this point in our pumpkin. Um, now you're more than welcome to follow the pattern and um, obviously finish up your uh, pumpkin. After round 15, um, you then get into decrease rounds um, but my next live will be going through um, how to do the decrease rounds and uh, finishing up the gourd and then uh, crocheting the stalk and um, the tendril. So um, we'll be doing this piece and this piece. Um, so for inserting the eyes that you made earlier, Okay, so um, what I'm showing you here is that the, actually, let me go back a bit, hang on. So we're now going to insert the posts of the eyes into the pumpkin and you've got about seven rounds of e even rounds um, for the sides of your pumpkin. So you want to put your eyes about halfway up the side. First of all, I put my starting tail end of my eye into the back of the fabric. Then I put my posts through the pumpkin fabric and then I make sure that the eyes are in the right place, that they're even and they're exactly where I want them to be. And then I put the washers on the back of the posts. So um, I don't uh, sew the white parts of the eyes onto my pumpkin yet. Um, I actually do that after I have um, finished the gourd part and the pumpkin stuffed. Um, but uh, if you prefer to sew them on, then go right ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, where we've got to so far. And I think the next live is going to be on Thursday morning. Um, my kids are in school in the mornings, like two mornings a week. So the... Um, that's probably the best time for me to do these lives. Um, so I will see you next time when we will finish up the gourd and um, make the stalk and the, uh, the tendril here. And then your pumpkin will be done. Um, so I'll set up the live a couple of days beforehand so you'll know when it's coming, but I think it will be um, next Thursday morning. So hopefully you enjoyed this, you found this fun. Um, let me know in the comments uh, if you um, enjoyed this format. Okay, take care. Bye.